Hello, my name is Will Bowden and I teach Roman archaeology here at the University of Nottingham. I began my career as an archaeologist digging at Stansted Airport in the 1980s uh, and since then have worked in many places across Europe and the Mediterranean because fortunately uh, the Roman Empire was very big. One of the most frequent questions you get asked as an archaeologist is what's the best thing you've ever found? This is actually quite a hard question to answer. Most of us think about the way that our small discoveries build up into a bigger picture of how a society might be changing or developing. Despite the sort of Indiana Jones image, most archaeology is not about the discovery of treasures or, or single objects. The finds that make the news, for example, the, the hoards found by metal detectorists, are often buried in hidden places away from where people lived. And as archaeologists, of course, we're interested in people's lives. So we tend to look in the places that people did live. We're looking for the bones, the potsherds, and the remains of settlements uh, to tell us about people's lives in the past. That said, if I had to pick a single discovery that sticks in my mind, um, it would probably be a rich Iron Age burial uh, that we found during an excavation at uh, San Vincenzo al Volturno in the mountains of central Italy. We were part of a team working for the British School at Rome and digging in the idyllic conditions uh, of this uh, small mountain community. We were investigating a medieval abbey and I was running excavations at the so-called New Abbey. It was new in the sense that it was, although it was 12th century, uh, it was newer than the 9th century abbey that was on the other side of the river. And in part we were excavating and recording things and features that were coming up during renovation works at the abbey buildings. Beneath the abbey garden, we were surprised to find a cemetery uh, that dated not to the period of the abbey, but to the 5th century BC, over 1200 years older than the abbey itself. The abbey lay in the territory of the Samnites, who were the Iron Age people that inhabited this part of Italy uh, before they were conquered by the Romans. Uh, the graves were neatly cut into the limestone bedrock and were often furnished with pots and sometimes other objects. They were potentially vulnerable to tomb robbers and so we had to set up an overnight guard and dig them with some secrecy and some speed. The most spectacular of these burials was that of a young woman uh, of around 20 years old, who was buried with a really splendid assortment, assortment of beads and copper jewellery and an array of pottery. And this grave dated uh, to sometime around the 5th century BC. And it illustrates a fascinating time in the history of Italy, before the territory of the Samnites fell under Roman control, but at a moment where even mountain, uh, mountain communities uh, like those of the Samnites were coming into contact uh, with the wider Mediterranean world. We have things like uh, Greek style pottery manufactured uh, in Campania in southern Italy and yet turning up in the graves of the people living in this fairly remote mountainous region. So on an academic level, it's certainly important and exciting to find a grave that fits into these sorts of wider historical pictures. But nonetheless, the thrill of actually seeing it emerge from the ground was unforgettable. Um, Perhaps more importantly, it's a snapshot into the life of a young woman who lived around two and a half thousand years ago. 
And perhaps it's that, that window into the lives of people who don't appear in the written sources and who would otherwise be lost uh, from history, which is why that I personally will never get bored of studying archaeology.